Okay, so we're going to be showing you the circulatory recipe for the upper back. Uh, our client is here on the table face down. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start by moving the drape down to expose the upper back for the areas that we're going to be working on. And we're actually going to start our first circulatory stroke on a stroke that works on the neck and then comes down onto the shoulder. Now this move has a change, changing stance and so it does. it is a little bit more complex than other movements that we've done. But the idea is that we're going to go ahead and stand at the table and initially as we start we're going to take our bow stance and face directly across the table. As we do this move we're going to turn 90 degrees. What we need to do is as we turn we're going to come up onto our toes, rotate our feet and set the heels back down. When we come back to the starting position we come up onto the toes, turn the feet and come back to the starting position. Now that we have that covered, what we're going to do is go ahead and use a little bit of lotion or oil. Make sure that the surface that we're working on has a light lubrication on it. We're going to take our arm. In this particular case, I'm going to take my left arm, take my elbow, and tuck it to the hip. I'm going to take a soft fist, and I'm going to put my knuckles just inferior of the mastoid process. Now as I begin the stroke, I'm going to turn. As I start to get to the shoulder, I pop up onto my toes, turn to face down the table, and then come back onto the starting position. And this stroke does tend to feel pretty good. Most clients really like it, so it's a good move to really practice that shifting stance on. And with that, we should be ready to move on to our second move. All right, so we're ready for the next set of moves. The next moves that we're going to be doing are going to be all across the table. Uh, we're going to do trapezius first, then we're going to get the rhomboids, and lastly, we're going to go through infraspinatus and the deltoids. Uh, as we get started to do upper trapezius, we're going to take our bow stance. We're going to stand over the opposite shoulder. We're going to take our bow stance that's looking down the same slope as the trapezius of their shoulder, and we're going to go ahead and make sure that we're using our lotion here to keep things gliding and we're going to do a palm stroke over the upper trapezius. Good, then we'll switch it up to knuckles. You'll notice in this particular case I'm using a really loose fist uh, to help make sure that I'm not bumping my knuckles into their bony shoulder parts. And then we can do a tr uh, trench here as well. Good, once we've done that for the upper trap, we're going to move in the same stance. We're just going to go ahead and start to address the rhomboids with a palm stroke. Now the deltoids are a pretty short stroke here, so literally that's about all I have to do. So palm strokes, little tiny strokes are enough to get the rhomboids here. In general, you don't want your stroke to carry over the spine, so make sure that you're not starting on the opposite side of the spine and going over the spine. You want to start from the spine and just push to the vertebral or vertebral, vertebral border of the scapula. Okay, going into our knuckles. Trenching. And bringing our thumbs down. Once we've got the rhomboids done, we're going to take our stance and we're actually going to step down the body, shifting our bow stance to look up towards the opposite corner. Our palm stroke is going to carry over the infraspinatus and through the deltoids. So as you're doing this stroke, if you're paying attention, you might be able to feel the spine of the scapula. You want to make sure that you're staying inferior of that. And if you can, you also want to push your stroke so that way you're catching the deltoids of the shoulder. Palming first, then putting knuckles down. Good. Trenching next. And thumbing in this case is going to be a little bit of a stretch. We could try for it, but in case you can't reach all the way across the table, that's okay. And once we've done that, we'll be ready for our next set of moves, which are going to be on the same side of the table. Okay, so we're going to be working on the next muscles from the same side of the table. Uh, what we should do first is make room. We're going to be working on the teres major and minor, which is on the lateral uh, scapula, uh, just next to the axilla. So we're going to go ahead and block the arm and allow the arm to come off to the side of the table. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take a bow stance at the side of the table facing upwards. And we're going to be doing a palm stroke, knuckle stroke, and trenching 
right on the side of the scapula, really thinking about addressing the teres major and the teres minor. Okay, so we got our palm strokes through here. We're going to go for our knuckling next. A lot of times I really make a, uh, an effort to emphasize kind of coming in almost under the shoulder blade to really catch uh, the teres muscles more than the infraspinatus that we just got done with. And lastly, going with our trenching tool. Again, you might think about trying to trench the borders of these muscles that we're working on, get a sense of where they're attaching to on both sides. All right, once we've worked on the teres major and minor, we can transition to the next portion of our uh, recipe here where we're basically just going to kind of knuckle the axilla. So at this point, what we can do is we can take the arm and create just a little bit more uh, opening of the uh, axilla here or bringing the arm slightly more over the head. And we can just kind of, kind of rub, uh, kind of like kneading with our knuckles through this space. And this also allows us to transition into an over the head movement where if the client can bring their arm over the head, then we can actually take a, uh, to kind of kneel down in front of them uh, to work the rest of the arm all the way down to the hand. So this is where we'd be able to bring the arm up here. And at this point I can work on the deltoids, biceps, triceps, into the forearms, and even down into the hand. Once you've done all the work that you want to do here, we're going to go ahead and bring the arm back up to the side and allow them to rest here. Okay, so we're coming up to the last couple moves in our routine here. Uh, the next one that we're going to be doing is kind of a looping stroke where we create kind of a circular type of a movement. This move starts by creating a bow stance again at the set head of the table, facing up towards the table, uh, towards the head. We're going to place our hand at the bottom of the trapezius, at the lower trapezius, at approximately T12. We're going to be trenching or pushing our trench all the way up through the trap, over the shoulder, and then grasping and lifting the trap up sliding the fingers through the supraspinous fossa and then dragging the fingers through the teres muscles to go back to the start. And we'll do this loop a few times, all the way over, lifting and stretching the trap up and to the side, dragging back through the teres muscles. And once we've done that, we'll do our last move as well. We're basically going to be doing another movement that's coming up through the trapezius. To set ourselves up for this one though, what we're going to do is we're going to lightly place our hand underneath the shoulder of the client. Once we have our hand here, that allows us to raise the shoulder and shorten the trapezius in the center of the back. Once we've done that, we're going to go ahead and lightly lift the shoulder. We're going to place our ulna at the same spot at the lower trapezius, and we're going to go ahead and just trench a heavy but gentle elbow all the way through and down past the upper trapezius, and we can bring that back and do that stroke a couple times. If you feel like this area is a little bony, again, you can use your off hand to lightly lift the shoulder, and that should create a little bit more softness and shortness in the muscles in the middle of the back. Once you've done this, you just need to make sure that you've done it on both sides, and that should wrap up the circulatory routine for the upper back.